World War III warning, North Korea could end the world with just three thermonuclear bombs. North Korea could destroy the entire world with just three bombs, the belligerent state's unofficial ambassador to the West has warned. Honorary North Korean citizen Alejandro Caldebinos, 43, issued a chilling warning to the world and insisted no one would touch the country governed by tyrant Kim Jong-un. The Spaniard is one of the few Westerners with access to the secret of regime's inner workings, as he is an honorary special delegate of the North's Committee for Cultural Relations with Foreign Countries. He told Spanish news site Infobee, no one is going to touch Korea. If it is touched the people will defend it with guns and missiles. We have the thermonuclear bomb. With three of those the world is finished. The terrifying claims come as tensions between the West and Kim Jong-un's dictatorship approach boiling point. Pyongyang threatened China of catastrophic consequences to relations if it cooperates with the U.S. over economic sanctions. And expert analysis shows that crazed Kim's nuclear arsenal is at its most sophisticated since the despot took over from his father in 2012. Mr. Caldebinos also offered some insights into life in the Herman nation painting a picture of a utopia. He said, the people have a basic, secure life with dignity. They live in a very peaceful way, there is no social conflict, we don't have people sleeping in the street. It's another way of life, one in which we all work in a huge cooperative movement. Despite the fears of global annihilation, iron-fisted despot Kim was pictured looking jubilant during an opening ceremony of a newly constructed residential complex in Pyongyang, Pyongyang, now Kim Jong-un is threatening Australia with nuclear hellfire. It feels as if a week doesn't go by without North Korea's diminutive dictator, Kim Jong-un, threatening to nuke somebody. Usually the United States. In fact, it happens so often that it's barely worth reporting on it any longer. But following the recent productive meetings between Australian leaders and Vice President Pence, the chubby autocrat has decided to expand the exclusive club of North Korean nuclear targets to include the land down under. NBC News North Korea has launched into a war of words against Australia over the country's alliance with the US, warning the country is within striking a range of a nuclear weapon. A spokesman for the North Korean Foreign Ministry accused Australian Foreign Minister Julie Bishop of spouting a string of rubbish against the DPRK, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, over the country's missile testing, adding Australia is blindly and zealously towing the U.S. line. If Australia persists in following the U.S. moves to isolate and stifle the DPRK and remains a shock brigade of the U.S. master, this will be a suicidal act of coming within the range of the nuclear strike of the strategic force of the DPRK. The Australian Foreign Minister had better think twice about the consequences to be entailed by her reckless tongue lashing before flattering the U.S. To her credit, Aussie Foreign Minister Julie Bishop took the usual reasoned approach of responding by saying that North Korea would do better figuring out a way to feed their starving population than figuring out ways to start a nuclear war. But the incident is yet another reminder of how North Korea seems to be wielding a lot more bluster than actual threat, at least for the time being. And at this point, what's the benefit of continuing to entertain all of these childish rants? Yes. It should be a serious matter when one national leader threatens another one in this fashion. But let's face it. As I said above, he's always threatening somebody. Just this weekend Kim said he might sink one of our aircraft carriers. That's a very serious charge as well, but does anyone actually think he's going to do it? It's not a stretch of the imagination to say that Kim Jong-un is crazy. And I'm not discounting the danger of having a crazy person in control of some nukes. But is he actually crazy enough to not be aware of, or not care about, the reality of what would happen if he made good on any of these threats? If Kim lights off a single nuke anywhere not even his long-standing relationship with China is going to save him. North Korea will be obliterated. Yes, he'll be able to unleash some awful forces for a short time and the most likely result is that Seoul will be devastated and we'll have a bloody battle on our hands at the DMZ. But before very long at all, Kim's military capabilities and his government would be completely shattered and expended and the Korean peninsula would be a wasteland. 
Similarly, if North Korea attacks our carrier task force, we're going to be at war. And in that event far more of the world will be on our side than will be against us. I seriously doubt even China would have come back at that point given all they have to lose in terms of economic ties with the United States. Either way, the final outcome for Kim Jong-un is obliteration. So I would ask again, how worried are we that he would really pull the trigger? This is almost certainly all bluster to keep his people on alert against the West and supporting him in the face of the common enemy. That's not to say that we shouldn't continue international efforts to force North Korea into giving up their weapons program, but what Kim seems to crave more than anything else is attention. It's getting to the point where I'd rather see other world leaders responding to these threats, if they bother to do so at all, with some dismissive remark about the petulant little fat dictator, indicating that we're all bored with his randings and including a reminder that if he's actually stupid enough to attack anyone he will be utterly destroyed. Kim Jong-un might enjoy less support at home if he didn't constantly have these propaganda battles to display for his people. And without that common enemy, North Korea citizens might have more space to consider just how bad off they are. How many of his people are aware that their dear leader lives in a fabulous palace, replete with luxury and five-star cuisine while shocking numbers of his own people are literally starving to death? Apparently Dennis Rodman was a guest there and can tell you all about it, do most of them even know about Kim's concentration camps and how many of their fellow citizens are dying there every day? In the end it remains desirable to see Kim Jong-un removed. But the best option along those lines would be for his own people to take care of the job. I'm not sure what we'd get in terms of a replacement if there was a revolution in North Korea but it could hardly be much worse than what we've got now. We've got now. Japan scrambles to avoid World War III, record number of fighter jets sent to deal with China. Japan scrambled a record number of fighter jets in the past 12 months amid sharply escalating tensions with China, official figures have revealed. The Japanese Air Self-Defense Force said fighter jets had been scrambled 1,168 times in the 12 months up to the end of March this year. The overall figure is a sharp rise compared to the preceding 12 months when jets were deployed 873 times. The previous high was 944 times back in 1984. Of the total, a record 851 jets were used to ward off Chinese planes that were close to Japanese airspace, a rise of 280 compared to the previous 12 months. Russian planes, mostly bombers were also of a particular concern after flying from the north and coming close to Japan, with 301 incidents, a rise of 4.5%. The figures come amid Japanese fears China is increasing its military activity as it attempts to gain influence in the East China Sea and areas of the Western Pacific Ocean, mainly focused around the chain of islands stretching for 870 miles from the mainland south toward Taiwan. Japan has also been building up military activity with its navy carrying out exercises in conjunction with the U.S. near the Korean Peninsula as global tensions with North Korea continue to grow. The joint exercises are seen as a show of strength against the saber-rattling of North Korea's dictator Kim Jong-un. Reports that the North Korean leader was preparing to detonate a nuclear device have emerged overnight with the Voice of America reporting the country had plans to test a bomb buried in a tunnel. Journalists visiting North Korea have have been told to prepare for a big unimportant event on Thursday as Pyongyang marks the 105th birth anniversary of its founding president Kim Il-sung on April 15, North Korea's biggest national day called Day of the Sun. However, the military exercises by Japan will linger China, which has supported North Korea. It has reacted by scrambling 25,000 more troops to the border with North Korea and put the country on nationwide alert. The extra troops are on top of the 150,000 which were mobilized on Sunday to the area. China's armored and mechanized infantry brigades in the Shandong, Zhejiang and Yunnan provinces have been given the go-ahead. Tensions regarding North Korea have threatened to boil over in recent weeks after U.S. President Donald Trump promised to deal with the nation unilaterally should China not help and put pressure on their neighbor and ally. The U.S. President tweeted, North Korea is looking for trouble. If China decides to help, that would be great. If not, 
We will solve the problem without them. USA, USA. China threatens to bomb North Korea if tyrant Kim Jong-un crosses this bottom line. The Chinese military would react with force if Kim Jong-un's nuclear activities adversely affected areas of China bordering the Herman nation, according to an editorial in a government-owned newspaper. The article in the Communist Party-affiliated Global Times stressed the North's nuclear facilities must not put northeastern regions of China in danger. The editorial said, China has a bottom line that it will protect at all costs, that is, the security and stability of Northeast China. If the bottom line is touched, China will employ all means available including the military means to strike back. By that time, it is not an issue of discussion whether China acquiesces in the U.S. blows, but the Chinese People's Liberation Army PLA, will launch attacks on North Korean nuclear facilities on its own. The Chinese provinces of Liaoning and Jiling border the tiny nuclear-armed dictatorship. The infamous Peng Iren nuclear site is located closer to the Chinese border than it is to the North's capital, Pyongyang. It added, if by any chance nuclear leakage or pollution incidents happen, the damage to Northeast China's environment will be catastrophic and irreversible. While the editorial is not representative